Ahoy, my friends, if Scorp's tales be to your liking. Give this video a sly thumbs up to spread the word. And join our merry gang by subscribing. So you never miss an episode. Your support is the wind in our sails. Our guiding breeze. And with that, enjoy the video. In the freezing dawn, Scorp begrudgingly greets the biting cold, his funds dwindling as he secures meager supplies for the journey. The allure of adventure and coin pulls him from the safety of Ironforge, the bustling dwarven city. Beyond the city gates, a relentless wind cuts through Scorp's worn, war-torn attire. The frigid air haunts his solitary trek through snowy mountains. By the time he shivers into the dwarven town of Karanos, a skeptical and mildly racist dwarf redirects him to Coldridge Valley. Oh! A human! Think you're better than us? Wanting special treatment for being taller than us, huh? Get your skinny ass over to Coldridge Valley! The frosty reception in Karanos pushes him forward along the path to Coldridge Valley. As he navigates the treacherous terrain, Scorp, armed with his trusty boomstick, confronts a trog-infested tunnel. Each gunshot echoes defiance, proclaiming his survival skills against the grotesque trogs. We charged after a brief respite in the lively town of Anvilmar, nestled in the heart of Coldridge Valley, he plunges into tasks that aid the dwarven community. A frosty call to action sends him on a wolf-hunting mission crucial for feeding Anvilmar's inhabitants. Despite his particular set of skills, he is forced to take on the role of a lame mailman. Scorp battles the biting cold to deliver letters, finding solace at campfires along the way. Demonstrating expert marksmanship, he dispatches some small boars with precision. Still not being taken seriously, he is ordered to become a dwarven variation of the water boy and deliver hot cocoa from one end of the valley to the other. This cup will only stay hot for five more minutes, and Dernan didn't order chilly morn brew, so get going! Inside Anvilmar, a gnome engineer seeks Scorp's help in retrieving scattered tools from ice troll camps. Oh wee Please help me! Effortlessly dispatching the trolls, he reclaims the tools, adding a sense of real purpose to his community service. Amidst the snowy expanse, a naked gnome catches Scorp's eye, shivering in the frigid air. Sold them! I'm better naked, <laughs> Learning the gnome is struggling financially, he offers up some torn rags he stole from the ice trolls. Thanks! I'll never forget you! Proving his mettle within Coldridge Valley, he earns a tangible symbol of acceptance, a permission slip and badge granting him the privilege to linger among the dwarves of Karanos. In Karanos, the pragmatic mercenary invests in flint, tinder, and firewood. No longer reliant on cold dwarven hospitality, he becomes self-sufficient with his ability to build campfires in the wilderness. Still short on coin, he accepts a mission requiring his expertise in the hunting of yetis deep within a foreboding cave. Scorp ventures into the cave and swift and decisive, he hunts smaller yetis, collecting their furs with ease. Within the yeti cave, he sets up camp, a sanctuary from the biting winds outside. By the flickering firelight, he crafts high-quality leather from yeti furs, helping him meet the meticulous needs of leatherworking. Observing dwarves and gnomes engaging in yeti killing, he waits patiently, seizing the opportunity after each skirmish to skillfully skin the creatures with minimal effort required. Deep within the icy yeti cave, he strategically fends off the relentless creatures with his trusty boomstick. Maintaining a campfire in the center, he expertly attacked from a distance, showcasing his combat and survival prowess as gunfire echoed in the icy cavern. Returning to Ironforge, he safeguards his supply of leather, finding respite from chilling winds at the giant molten furnace within the center of the city. The radiant warmth offered a temporary escape from the frozen wastes outside the mountain. Exploring Ironforge, curiosity led him to a dim alley where he discovered a mysterious chest. Using his gun as an improvised lockpick, he unveiled a magical rune, which enhanced his accuracy and granted him the ability to shoot foes between the eyes with expert precision. Eager to hone his skills further, he sought a rogue trainer, enduring a cunningly expensive lesson where he was scammed to learn abilities he probably wouldn't use. Armed with new skills, he ventured into the snowy wild to find sustenance and profit. Routine hunting and crafting became more challenging as larger boars, requiring more firepower, tested his limits. In the desolate aftermath of abandoned dwarven camps, he scavenged through remnants left by wild beasts and marauders. Among the scattered debris, he stumbled upon a damaged crate with frozen chunks of cheese contained within, a chilling testament to the ambush that befell the forsaken camp, all that remained after the wild beasts had had their fill. Facing extreme cold and dwindling supplies, 
he set up a campfire by an unfrozen lake, refining his fishing skills in the flickering warmth. With no funds for food, he journeyed west of Dunmoro, finding an absence of edible provisions for sale, merely booze and some milk for some reason. Determined to procure his own food other than the slimy fish he caught, Scorp continued west, uncovering the mystery of the ransacked camps when he encountered crazed, irradiated gnomes wreaking havoc. Hiding among the irradiated gnomes, he met a dwarven secret agent on a covert mission. Promised a generous reward for his help, Scorp willingly dispatched the irradiated gnomes, fueled by mild prejudice towards gnomes in general. The task held no moral dilemma for him, as he eliminated the frenzied, mutated creatures. Before returning to Karanos, he had salvaged random cogs and gears from irradiated gnomes. Delivering them to some nerdy gnomish scientists, he made a hasty retreat before their machine could malfunction and zap them all to death. Let me install these gyro mechanic gears and restabilization cogs, and we'll figure out the recombobulator. That should do the trick. Time to save the entire gnomish race. Here goes nothing. In the harsh, snowy mountains, he discovered a secret ice troll camp where he stealthily pilfered their prized recreational herb stash, Shimmerweed. A scuffle ensued, but Scorp's combat prowess secured the entire cache. Returning triumphantly, he handed it to Mr. Barleybrew, the inventive brewmaster. Rather than indulging in a smoke, Mr. Barleybrew infused the Shimmerweed into a famous stout, which he found delicious. Despite being high, he enlisted Scorp in transporting a cask of the Shimmerweed Stout to the eastern front of Dunmoro, promising good pay. During the return journey, Scorp encountered Juwan, a peculiar dwarf woman whose robotic responses hinted at something afoot. Testing the theory, he lured leper gnomes to attack her. To his astonishment, she stood there and let the irradiated gnomes slice her up. After a brief moment, her lifeless robotic corpse reanimated, confirming her unnatural state as a snow leopard and bear tore her apart, he noticed her guild name was called The Wall. Continuing his travels, he encountered more strange figures, including a dwarf who believed himself to be a snow leopard. Mayo! Wary that the radiation-riddled west may be causing mental deficiencies among the inhabitants, he opted for a shortcut through the mountainous terrain towards Karanos. Along the snowy landscape, he encountered Tundra Magran a dwarf lamenting the theft of a month's worth of dried meat stolen from him by a giant yeti. Unwilling to ignore the transgression, Scorp, harboring no love for yetis, offered his trusty boomstick and formidable skills as aid. Scorp snuck into the yeti's hideout and to his surprise found no yeti present. As he reached for the meat locker, a colossal yeti materialized unexpectedly, launching a ferocious assault. Undeterred, Scorp deftly maneuvered through the onslaught, using incapacitating strikes and precise shots to keep the mighty Yeti at bay. Roars of the Yeti's demise echoed through the cavern as Scorp emerged virtually unscathed, showcasing his unrivaled combat prowess. For his valiant efforts, he received a handsome reward, coins jingling in his pockets as a reward for his bravery and skill. With a sense of accomplishment and some minor wealth to his name, Scorp retraced his steps, returning to the familiar refuge of Karanos, where he sat down to rest for the night. <laughs>